What's going on guys? I'm back with some more Manchester United transfer news this January. When I planned to do this video, it was only going to be on one person. It was only going to be on one person, but a lot has happened in the last 24 to 36 hours. And now, I'm talking about three people. Two ins, one out, Kalu Koulibaly, Bubakari Samore, and Ashley Young. Yes, 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 the breaking news, Ashley Young is set to leave Manchester United. Um, after eight and a half years of service, ups and downs, some may only remember the downs. I like to have a balanced view on this. Um, his time at Man United looks set to be coming to an end. We have accepted a £1.3 million bid from Inter Milan. For him to leave in the January. Of course, we know at this moment he's a free agent, so he could arrange and agree a contract with any foreign club to join in the summer for free. We have accepted a fee, and I think the fee is nominal. I don't think we're accepting the money because we need it in that respect, but I think it's more of a, a thank you. Ashley Young has stated, I want to go. I need to go somewhere where I am guaranteed maybe first team football or much more football. The reality as a Manchester United at this time, his, his playing time has been, and correctly so, has been dwindling. Um, wan has made the right back position his own. Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams are fighting over the, the left back position and he only gets uh, a look in when there are injuries. So, you know, and there's still Dallow who is injured at the moment and he, I would say, is you know, probably the second choice right back. Um, but wan like plays pretty much every game. So at 34 years old, probably his last, I'm sure it will be his last big contract. We offered him an extension one year deal, but Inter may offer him two, three years. Um, at 34 years old, going to be 35 this year. I think we've done the right thing for the club, but also for him. Ash Young gets a lot of stick. Um, and I think he has bore the brunt of Manchester United's recent demise. Him as well as others. You know, it's not just him. It's him, Fellaini, Lukaku, um, among others, Matic. They've borne the brunt of Man United's demise. And it's not entirely, even if majority, down to them. Ash Young has been a good son for Man United. 192 league games, over 200 games in, um, in all competitions for Manchester United. He's won a Premier League title 2013. He's won an FA Cup in 2016. League Cup um, in 2017, as well as the UEFA Cup and so Europa League, that is, and the Community Shield. He He's done, he's, he's been relatively successful in a time where, as a club, we haven't been very successful. Um, and I have to give him props. He's played, he obviously joined as a left winger from Aston Villa. And he's played at left wing back under Van Gaal. He's played left back. He's played right back. He has been a servant for Manchester United, but he's no longer good enough for what we want to what we want to do and the direction we want to go in. And it's time for both of us to part ways. And I've been very strong um, in defence of Ash Young at times. Uh, for example, in the summer, just gone the preseason, he came on. I think it was the first preseason. It could be against Perth. I can't actually remember now, but it was Perth first preseason game. And he got booed. And it, later they, cha they changed and turned into chairs. But he got booed. And I was like, that's disgusting. It's a preseason game, first and foremost. Actually, no, that's not even first and foremost. First and foremost, that's your own player. That's your own player. And you're booing him. For what? Because he's not good enough. He's always given 100%. Always given 100%. And I can't begrudge a person who gives 100%. He hasn't caused any unrest. He has been um, very professional, taking the club captaincy um, at the, at, on, under Solskjaer. He's always given 100% when he's on that field, 110% even when he's on that field. If he's not good enough, he's not good enough. He doesn't pick himself. He's there to do a job the manager wants him to do, and he does that to the best of his ability. And that's all I can ask for from any Man United player, to the best of your ability. If you're not good enough, you have to be moved on by those above. 
But if you're at the club and they call upon you, you have to do your job, and he's always done that. First and foremost, as I said, he's a, he's a main night player. You don't boo your main night player. And the booming of Priest and Fenley, a game that has no relevance of anything, for me, it's an agenda that stinks and one that I, I never agree with. When, when May Night fans booed Fellaini while he was warming up, um, I think it was a game against Tottenham a few seasons back because he gave away a penalty in the game before. Disgust, I was disgusted. I was in Old Trafford at the time. And I was sitting there just shaking my head. I was, was absolutely disgusting at that moment to be a Man United fan. So I don't want all this abuse and you know celebration because the player's leaving. Let's acknowledge that the club's made the right decision. The player, we wish the player, wish Ashley Young good luck in everything he does, of course, unless we play him in the Europa League this season or any time in the future. But we wish him good luck, 100%. He hasn't disrespected Man United or the fans. He's been a consummate professional so i thank you ashley young for your service uh helping us win the trophies that we did um being a bit of a shit house when it comes to the oppositions that you were pocketing mo salah and Mane time and time again thank you ashley young for your service but all good things or bad in some cases must come to an end and uh, our time has come to an end. 1.5 million euros, 1.3 million pounds transfer to Inter Milan. Just the medical uh, to be sorted. So, uh, yeah, Ashley Young has played his last game for Manchester United. That's one. Secondly, actually, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave the last person to the one I was actually going to talk about initially. So now we're going to talk about Bubakari Somore. Um, now the, the the talk is, and it's from what you would like to say is um, reputable sources. That being Sky Sports, they've always generally been very good with their sources. Not a hundred percent. I mean, no one is really a hundred percent when it comes to information, especially when it's. I mean, when it's not facts, there's always a chance of it doesn't happen. So if you say X Y Z is interested in, or they're close to. If it's not done, it's not done, isn't it? So sometimes you think mm, that's just that's just full on rumors, and sometimes you think it's got some legs to it. Now, Bubakari Samore, I ain't seen this guy play football. I see, sorry, that's not true. I've seen him play a little tiny, not even a full match, but I've seen a little tiny bit against Chelsea in in, um, in the, the Champions League. I didn't watch the whole game of any of Chelsea's uh, games against Leo. And this season Champions League, so I haven't even seen him a full 90 minutes. Um, I don't know much about him. I really don't know much about him other than a little bit of research that I've done. It was actually a few weeks ago when we were on the, the, I was on the football dugout and I heard that Chelsea were interested in him. So I was like, okay, let's see who this guy's about. So I did a bit of research and I, I mentioned it to have hope actually. And I was like, yeah, he's a new Kante. And, and he's a new Pogba. Black, French guy. Um, central midfielder, new Kante, new Pogba. But that's what everyone, you know, maybe that's a that's an obvious comparison. And I watched some clips of him, and I can see a little bit why people are comparing to Pogba. I can't see the Kante bit at all, but I can see a little bit of the Pogba in the way that he he can drive forward. But I think it's a bit of a reach. I think it's the fact that he's French, he's black, he's and he's. Um, playing the same position as Pogba or similar position at least I think that's as far as it goes I wouldn't say they're, they're similar types of players um, Pogba is a attacking midfielder central attacking midfielder whereas for me um, and for what, what I've researched what I know uh, Bubakar Samore is a central midfielder slash um, defensive midfielder maybe box to box be in his preferred role um, 20 years old, he's made a good impression so far in France, in Ligue 1, but it is Ligue 1, you have to be careful with that, but the, the, the talk is that Manchester United and Chelsea are both, basically it's a decision between the two, he's going to leave this month, but he's going to be the only player from Lille to leave this month, but he's going to leave this month, but the decision won't be made apparently until after the 26th of January, I believe they've got a big game on the 26th. It could be against PSG, but um, I can't actually remember. But it's going to be made after that game. Which doesn't give it, leave a lot of time. But I mean, if everything's in place, the, the bid is is um, agreed by Lille, the, the transfer uh, 
bid. If uh, the deal's already on the table, if it's just a matter of choosing, then of course you make a decision on the 26th, you can fly over and have everything done within a day or two. Um, even less if we're speaking in reality, because we know transfer deals can happen on a deadline day, on one day. Bid, accepted, a contract, medical, all of that. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that one progresses. The, the news is that basically it's just a, a matter of him choosing between Chelsea and Manchester United. I don't know much about him, as I said, 20 years old. But what I, what I do like about at least the link or, or the, the prospect of our signing is that us all fans know where our problems lie. We say it every week, central midfield. One of our biggest problems anyway. Um, and it looks like we are trying to address that in this window. Of course, the last window we addressed the defence, um, and we're going to get onto that as well in a bit. But it looks like we're looking to address those positions. The central attacking midfield in, in Bruno Fernandes. Cross my fingers on that one. And uh, box to box. more Slightly well, more defensive minded than Bruno Fernandes in Bubakari Samore. Does that solve all our problems? I mean the proof will be in the pudding. But no, I would say not. Because if Pogba goes, which uh, I expect him to do at the end of the year. Bruno Fernandes can add a creativity. I guess Bubakar Samore with, with the energy, um, the, the, the ability to carry the ball from deep and bring it forward. But he's young. But is he a defensive midfielder? Is he good enough to, let's say, replace Matic? Matic is the player who I would say is our only true defensive midfielder. If Solskjaer wants to play with a defensive midfielder, is he that guy? Mm, well, Based on what I know, what I've seen so far, I would say no, but maybe he could mold into that guy. He does, you know, he has the ability to tackle. He has the energy to get around. He's physical. He's um got the, the height, six foot two. But from what I've seen, he likes to get forward. So are you going to play him next to uh, Fred and ask Fred to sit as a defensive midfielder? Again, I don't think that's his natural positional role. Are you going to ask McTominay to sit as a defensive midfielder? Again, don't think it's his natural role. So... But he's 20 years old. So you can get him and you can still get another midfielder. Now, my only fear to an extent is that we don't, we, we have a, you know, a small budget, which is, I say small in comparison to the amount of money that we make. And we buy Bruno Fernandes, we buy some more and we say that is it. You know, the money has been spent. I feel that if we were to get him, that's a signing for the future. You can't expect someone to come from the French League at 20 years old with no uh, senior international experience. I think he hasn't even played 50 league games for Lille and expect him to walk in as, um, into the Man United team as a starter from, you know, from the get-go and play you know, 38 games in a Premier League season. We, need, we, do, we do need the options, 100%. Um, but I still think there are midfielders out there who I would go for as well as those two. We need numbers, we need quality and we're lacking in that area. Um, for me, the likes of Bruno Fernandes should be signed when Pogba's here. So when Pogba leaves, we still need to replace that. We still need an extra head. That quality that's gone out of... Now you might say, okay, Bruno Fernandes will do attacking then we need to replace the, the person of Pogba maybe with a defensive midfielder to play next to a Samore or a Fred or a McTominay or whatever it may be. Um, but we'll see how that progresses. As I don't know much about him. It'll, it'll be interesting. Um, but I think the intent for me is, is what's important. Getting the player, of course, is the most important. But I don't want to be linked with the likes of Declan Rice and Sean Longstaff because I've seen them. And they're not good enough. Granted, I don't know much about Samore. He may not be good enough. It could be a, a Bakayoko for Chelsea, for example. I don't know. It could be, you know, it could turn out to be what Drinkwater was when Chelsea signed him from, from Leicester. Um, you know, Arsenal fans have got excited over a number of players. You know, Pepe being one, you know, as an example from Lille. And he ain't delivered so far. So there's no guarantee that he's going to be a success if he was to join Man United or Chelsea. But I know there's certain players for me who aren't good enough. And Declan Rice is one for me. For what may not I need, I haven't seen enough. 
and I've seen a lot of him, but I haven't seen enough quality. And the same goes for, for Sean Longstaff. I haven't seen a lot of him, but I've seen, you know, a year or maybe six months worth of Sean Longstaff. And I'm like, I don't even know if you're good enough for Newcastle so far. Of course, these players are young in it, so things can happen. But as I say, we'll see how that one develops. Um, imagine if Man United signed two midfielders in one January transfer. I don't believe, no, actually, I don't believe it. I don't believe it because we are incompetent when it comes to transfers. To get one over the line in January would be a miracle. To get two, two, God must have come down early, I swear, I swear. But um, we'll see, we'll see. Finally, the person I was actually going to talk about, um, as you can see on the thumbnail, who this video initially was going to be about, um, is Kalidu Koulibaly. So the report came out a couple of days ago that Man United had agreed a £64 million transfer for centre-back Kalidou Koulibaly from Napoli. Really? That's what I want to... Really? Who, who believes this? Let me know in the comments below if you believe this story. I, I don't. I actually don't believe it. Now, I could be completely wrong and we could sign him. And he's a, he's a, he's a very good player. He's a world-class defender. Facts. But I don't believe it. We spent £80 million on Maguire. <laughs> 50 million on Wan Bissaka. And I'm not saying we don't need another defender because Bailly is always injured. Um, Lindelof, I don't think he's good enough, especially to play next to Maguire. Maguire needs that pace that I think I like, you know, Bailly or uh, Tuan Zabi has. But Bailly is always injured. Jones ain't good enough. So we need strengthening in that area anyway. But to buy a 28 year old, 65 million pound centre back with no resale value, granted he is world class. I'm not saying it would be a bad signing because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a bad signing. But it just doesn't... It doesn't fill me with belief. I don't believe we would do that. It goes against completely what we're hearing is Man United's transfer strategy. Young, hungry players. I'm not saying he's not hungry, but he's not young. He's going to be 29 in June. And the report goes on and says that the deal's been agreed, but it's going to happen in June. He's going to be 29. How many more years has he actually got at the top? We might get two, three solid world-class years out of him. I will take that. You know, we've made so much money that if we're going to spend 65 million on him of the fans' money as opposed to going to Glazer's pocket, thank God. I just hope it doesn't come away from other key areas where the money's not taken out of key areas where we need to strengthen, such as you know, up front or uh, wide right, as I think is a specialist position we need to, to strengthen. But if that's in addition to, I'm not going to turn my nose up at, up at it. No way. Kali Kulabai, like, before Van Dijk uh, moved to Liverpool, most people would have probably said, best defender in, in, the, in the world. Van Dijk has shown in the last year and a half, he's the best defender in the centre back in the world. So Kulabai comes second. Second best defender in the world. I can't turn my nose up at that at all. At all. But 65 million. Now, I know he was valued at about 100 million. This was about last January, wasn't it? Where Napoli wanted over 100 million for him. So it's been slashed by half, apparently. Um, and I guess, is that the market for a 29-year-old? That's, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. I would take it. I said I would take it, but that's a lot of money. For a 29 year old. Um, but he goes straight to the team. And him, listen, I'm not getting ahead of myself in it. But if him and Maguire were to be a partnership, I would be very, very surprised if it wasn't hands down the best defensive partnership in the league. Van Dyke is world class, best defender in the world. Gomez and Matip, neither of them are world class or Lovren, even though he would have you believe differently. Uh, Amrit Laporte, brilliant defender, his partner is not so. Uh, Spurs, Van uh, Vertonghen and Aldo Varel used to be a great partnership. But Vertonghen might not even be there next season. Um, and he's not playing centre-back at the moment. He's been playing to, on the left wing. Sorry, left back. And they're not what they used to be. But they used to be a great, great partnership. Arsenal, less said about that, the better. Chelsea, Rudiger, very good. Tomori, talented. I wouldn't necessarily say... I hear them world-class... Arguably Rudiger, arguably, but that's a, that's a, that's a push. 
Uh, who am I missing? Who am I missing? Leicester, Soyuncu, Evans. Yeah, so for me that will be the best partnership in the league, and I guess that's something to, to you know to build from. You ain't conceding goals at the back; you only need to get a goal up front. But I just hope that money don't come away from specialist areas that we need strengthening. Um, but again, it's how realistic is that? Sixty-five million for a twenty-nine-year-old, and Ed Woodward, the the chief executive, and we know how he goes with transfers. I'm not saying he hasn't spent money; he has. But when you look at the types of players we are being linked for, the ages of those players, you know, I just spoke about Samore, is 20 years old. And I do feel we need a mix. We need a mix of experience. Bruno Fernandes is 25. Um, Fred is, uh, well, he's, you know, he's in and around his prime. And Grant, you know, Juan Bissaka is young, but then Maguire is, is much more experienced. Senior defender, Koulibaly even more so. We've got a young front line. Maybe maybe they are going for a blend of experience and youth. I don't know, but listen, I would be I'll be excited about that signing. I'll be I'll be a bit reserved to know is you know we made that signing. Is that it? Do we know? Do we no longer have that money to spend or have money to spend on other key areas? So that's why that's what will res be reserved in my mind because I just don't trust the board when it comes to signings, and it's you know. It's going to take a lot for me to start trusting them again. We had a good window, yes. And we may have a very good one this this year, this um this January, yes. But PTSD, we've got a number of windows that's gone by where we haven't gone and got the required players. We had a great window in 2016. Pogba, Zlatan, Mkhitaryan. I can't remember if by came that season. I can't remember now. I think he did. I think he did actually. Great window. After that, it's been well. The next January we didn't do. We didn't strengthen. The summer after that, we bought Dallow and Lee Grant. The next January we didn't strengthen. We signed Phil Jones into a new contract. And last summer, as I said, two good players in Maguire and Wamasaka, but nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough. So. I need to, and and if we go back to Moyes and LVG and that kind of stuff, and we saw the players that we bought um, or didn't buy, they've got a lot of making up to do for me to start trusting them again. So, you know, I'm going to hold fire on that. Koulibaly, I will take that transfer tomorrow. Take it today. Um, but I'm just reserved about the, the plans and the amount of money available to Solskjaer um, in the transfers because there's a lot of holes that need fixing and I would start with the priority areas and right now centre back for me is not the priority area because I would say we've got three, four on our books competent centre backs and Bailly, Tranzebi, Lindelof and Maguire yeah, um, Jones has to go has to go um, it could improve yes but there's other areas which, which need much more um, improvement central midfield being the first one at least two players need to come in that area and as i said earlier right wing as well but guys let me know your thoughts on everything we spoke about today bubakari samare anyone know about him let me know um what you know about him in the comments ashley young and kalidu koulibaly um i'll end the video saying thank you ashley young thank you for your service to manchester united um yes, manchester united for the last eight and a half years from from me it has been greatly received. It is time to call it a day um, at this great club. And I wish you all the best with Inter Milan under Antonio Conte. And say, say hi to Lukaku for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, guys, and I'll see you soon.